All right, everybody, we're back on the Skywatchers Radio on the Dark Matter Digital Network. That's right, I said it right. Yes. And, of course, PSN Radio. This is Skywatchers Radio that you're listening to with Alan and Angel. And tonight, our guest, the returning Larry Seekander, who was here about a year ago almost, Larry. It's been, what, July of last year when you came on for the first time yeah, on the been, show? it's been about a year now, I guess, yeah. Almost a year, yeah. It's almost a year since you were here last. And, you know, last time you were here, we, you know, we were fascinated. I wasn't, because Alan over here, eh, he was MIA. But I oh, love the... that way. That's right. I was MIA. You were, you were, I don't know, you were being detained by the authorities. I don't know what's going on with you. Oh, wait a minute. Was it, was it that time that I was being detained? I think it was. That but, was a secret society grabbed him up. Yeah, that's no, what it was. No, 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 no. It, for those of you that didn't hear, uh, at one point during last year, I sort of got detained at a TSA checkpoint for yes, accidentally yes. having a firearm in my backpack, going through an airport. Accidentally. It really was an accident. Accidentally in your backpack going through an airport with a firearm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, happens to me all the time. To me. That sounds yeah. reasonable to me. Happens to me it's twice on Sundays. They let you go, right? Yeah. Actually, they did let me go. They just fined me $3,000. Wow, minor detail. <laughs> yeah. A couple yeah. of high rollers like you guys, you can afford stuff like that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, my maybe. God, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, did you not hear him cracking open, like, coins? Yeah, this, I heard that. The- this man is right. That's that's for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> I'm cracking open coins because I can't afford the dollar bills, damn it. Uh, oh, the, well, coppers, uh, uh, you get more money for copper than you do silver. Actually, that, copper that's true, worth, yeah. no, copper is worth today, uh, what is it, uh, 2.8 times it's, uh, a penny is actually in melt value worth 2.13 cents or something. Yeah, my God, you're a nerd. You know, hey, listen, I, I wouldn't mind counting pennies like that, you know, but it's illegal to melt, so you can't. Yeah, yeah well, but if it's melted, you don't even know it's penny. Well, I didn't hear you say that. I didn't either. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Somebody, Larry, somebody, get somebody it. tapped the line and said that probably the government. So tell me, what's what's the wonderful topic of the day for you? Hold on, let, let's go. Let's go back and give a little rewind here, Larry. Uh, give everybody a little of a synopsis of your story from the last time you were here, because obviously it's been it's been almost a year. So a lot of the listeners might yeah. not have heard that episode. Alan over here, of course, never listens to the archives, so he but, has huh? no clue what's going on ever at all. He is he's completely blind to the fact. But, huh? Good thing we're on radio. That's I'll a give good you thing. Basic rundown on the story. Give us the rundown like, again, and then we're going, and then I want an an update of what's going on with right now with the last year. But yeah, go I've ahead, give us the rundown. Information to sp- uh, spread today too. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, story starts 1985. Bob White was a music entertainer with movies and stuff like that, and he's on a trip to uh, Las Vegas with a girlfriend. He uh, went passed in the night somewhere, and his travels. In the high desert of Arizona, or high desert of Colorado, on old Route 6, they saw a bright light on the ground. He described it as a size of a full harvest moon or a uh, uh, story, three-story building, but extremely bright. They kind of rolled up on it, and uh, she was scared. He was standing outside the car. She turned the headlights on the car, and Bob described it in a blink of an eye, this light shot connected with two tubular neon lights high in the sky. There was a flash or an explosion. And this object that I have now was propelled back to where, where he originally saw the light. Right. He followed the uh, groove in the ground where it hit on the side of the hill and picked the thing up. And he had it for 10 years. He was still still performing at that time. And he didn't want to be known as a UFO nut, so he didn't bring it out or do anything about it. He just put it away, stuck it in his closet. In uh, 96, he decided he'd retired. He decided to see if he could find out what the thing was. it had been bugging him, you know, all those years, what he saw. And he went down to Rick Springs at a UFO conference down there. It used to be run by Lou Ferris, who's now Dolores Cannon's daughter's running it. And uh, trying to meet some UFO people in the Moulton Howe and, and a bunch of the crew that was the original crew from, the, from that conference down there. Nobody was really interested in him, and he didn't get any help or to, to speak of. Anyway, uh, it, it boils down to the point that we've had about 19 years' worth of research into this now, from 96 up to today, and there's still testing being done in uh, Colorado or in uh, Connecticut and in Carolina 
on, on samples of the object. It matches no known alloy aluminum manufactured on our planet. Which is definitely outside of Earth's atmosphere uh, from the testing we've had from cosmic radiation tests, uh, gamma beta, fast neutron radiation tests. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a nuclear test being run on it right now in Connecticut by Peter from Brelio. He's okay. a top notch uh, uh, expert in the field, does testing for soil samples for the government and everybody else. And the decay By the way, is, huh? Larry, real quick, do you have the radio in the background on or the TV? No. Oh, wait a minute. I know what it is. Get a feedback, aren't you? Oh, you're yeah, listening well, to, we're listening to our show on your show of the show. I mean, I love the sound of my voice. Don't get me wrong, but. Okay, does it stop now? Oh, yes, that's much does. better. Oh, that's much better. Okay, it was driving me crazy. Off my computer. Yeah, yeah, continue, anyway. continue. Phone center right next to the, to the computer. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's an un, unexplained phenomenon because of that. That's why I like the phenomenon only more. <laughs> and what it boils down to is the testing is ongoing on this thing. Right. They can find no match to it on a, on a, a, a little alloy that we manufacture. It's not space debris. It, so it's, uh, not, it's not a piece of a are, rock, right? It's, it's, it's definitely a metal. Are any elements on sort. the periodic table? All the elements are on the periodic table, but some of the most rare on Earth. And really? a normal alloy aluminum has from 9 to say, 15 elements in it. This okay. object has 33 identified in it so far. And again, it, all testing say it is an alloy, silicone alloy aluminum. Okay. It was manufactured for a purpose, but nobody can tell you what its purpose is. Nobody can duplicate it. I, I, you know, I've been asking for 18, 19 years. I don't go away. So I'm going to show me another one, how they made it. Wait, but but ain't nobody going to show me one. Wait, but are you telling me we can't even figure out how it was made? No. No. I just had a, just got a test finish. And the scientists, there was four scientists doing these tests. Right. I got an email from him with all the test results. Let me find out. Here it is. He writes, the guy's name is Rudolph Olson. He works for Sealy Corporation, North Carolina. It's one of the top five labs in the world. His email states, to describe the Bob White object in as simple as possible way, I think you could say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets and particles of aluminum silicone alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. March 2015. Now, as for the best scientists in the world, they got wazoo. They, they got uh, patents up to wazoo on ceramics and metals and everything else that they've they've uh, done. They can't tell me what it is or how to make it. Can't tell you where it came from. Hmm. I mean, they have no clue whatsoever. No clue whatsoever. That's six huh. months of testing. Now, is, is this going to be discussed in any uh, peer review journal or anything like that in the, in, in science? Once the testings are done, uh, I doubt it because mainstream scientists don't want to fool us. You know about that UFO, anything UFO related, they don't want to touch it. Especially you if they can't explain it. Yeah, but you would think this is the one thing if it can be proven that it's something out of this world that they would say, okay, well, we have to kind of look at this now. Yeah, well, I mean, I is, there, is it possible this could be uh, some kind of a meteor debris or no. some, something like that at no. all? No, other tests was done at Scripps, La Jolla, California. Okay. A guy named Chris McIsaac. His statement was, let me find it. Uh, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Here it is. We have concluded that the sample is fabricated. However, there is no substance, composition on nature, planet Earth, Moon, Mars, or the asteroid belt that has such high concentration of aluminum relative to the other elements. There is no natural substance, mineral, or meteorite with so much aluminum, and thus we conclude the sample in some kind of aluminum alloy manufactured on Earth or somewhere else. That's his uh, conclusions. Okay, so now what comes after this? I mean, if this if 
you know, they want nothing to do with it, and you're saying that this is proven that it's not from this world. What's the next step now for this artist? For well, this I, thing? I can't say it's not from this world. I say it was manufactured off the planet. Well, who made close it? enough. Who made it? Close enough. <laughs> you know, who made it? I don't know. I can't tell you who made it. It might be something that we have out there. But in 1985, I doubt it. We have another test that was done in 2009. We had unusual tests from Los Alamos. We had unusual findings from NIDS. Right. They all tried to explain it away as an aircraft aluminum, a 360 aluminum. NIDS said, well, it's close to the same match to it we can find as a 360 aluminum alloy. That's what aircrafts are. A lot of aircraft, engine blocks, stuff like that are made out of. Right. The problem right. is there's only nine elements in, air, in a 360 aluminum. At that test, they found 22 elements. One of the elements they didn't find in that object is tin. And aluminum always has tin in it. There's no I tin in a white object. Okay. Um, we had a test done at MSU in 2009 called an X-ray diffraction test. A guy by the name of uh, David Lamb did it, material science specialist. He now works for, uh, uh, let's see, working for the Navy Department doing testing out there. Now, he found uh, what they call an amorphous peak in his test. Now, that's a polycrystalline type, almost a glass structure. In the... Uh, in the matrix of the, of the object when he broke when he broke it down, okay. we don't have that metal. We there's no aluminum that has an amorphous peak in manufactured. We're just starting to get into that type of manufacturing process now. I mean, how how advanced would you say that this is compared to what we have now? I mean, how many hundreds of years would this be? I don't know if it's hundreds of years, but it's definitely fifty or better. Well, fifth year better might be might still be our government. The yeah, it, could, it it possibly, but the, see the problem is, in 1985 we didn't have uh, any any manufacturing plants in uh, outer space that I know uh, about. This is a uh, manufactured uh, uh, piece of metal. Larry, 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 hold yeah. on, hold on, Larry. Let me stop you guys right there. We remember the time when I said that I believe. Uh, that what happened at Roswell was one of our own boys that crashed, you know, something we created uh, with the uh, help of the Nazi German scientists that we brought over from Nazi Germany and the workings that we picked up from Nikola Tesla that was out there when he passed away of a flying saucer. I believe that what happened at, at Roswell happened. I think there was a flying saucer that crashed at Roswell. I just think there were, you know, yeah, perhaps maybe not aliens per se, but, you know, it was something we built. You know what I'm saying? And and here's the here's the thing. If they had that then, Larry, if they had that then and they were building it with some kind of exotic metal and some crazy exotic parts, if they had that in the forties, Larry. God uh, only knows what they have now. And yeah, I mean they could have this could be something from them. Or the U two. Right. You know, that's I mean, 30 years things... before anybody knew about them. Correct. Yeah, but yeah. hold on, hold on. That that's the SR seventy one, and that's only one company. That made that. Don't forget, there are multiple, mul- multiple industrial complex, uh, military industrial complex companies that were building all sorts of vehicles. Oh, yeah, we just absolutely. knew about the SR seventy one. I know. Finally, I mean, how long was the stealth running before we knew about it? Well, that was like fifteen years. I remember right. They were stationed down in New Mexico at the time, I believe. Here, Arizona, New Mexico. I can't remember now for sure. Exactly. So you know, but you know, they were flying for around fifteen years. That's a lot of UFO sightings around there. Of course, was the stealth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. I mean, that's been my theory for a long time, Larry. That a lot of ufology is based on misidentification of things that are black budget projects. Now, this does not say that's not saying that there's no such thing as aliens coming down to Earth. No, I believe there are aliens out there. I do think they they've come to Earth. I think they've visited once or twice, maybe three times. Who knows? I think they've been around here and they said, "Eh, bunch of monkeys running the world. Who cares?" Uh, And they left. Then they came back. Who knows? my but here's the thing: is, a lot of the things that people are seeing are man-made. Go ahead. Larry. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The problem with this object is nobody can show me another one. But if it's a black budget project, Larry, how, how are they going to do that? You know, it's okay. black budget. In 1947, right? You me? In Denmark, there was a piece of metal recovered. Right. And there's a file number from the Counterintelligence Corps, declassified document, 2000. 
but President Clinton in between cigar smoking. He classified a bunch of bunch of, <laughs> bunch of stuff, and uh, when he put, he put his humidor away, and uh, <laughs> her name is Monica Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> I would say that was his humidor, all right. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> have you seen Hillary? Now he said that I, I, my choo choo train just fell off the track. <laughs> Uh, yes, see. my wife well, has a penis. Yes. Okay, Denmark, 2000, uh, 1947, prior to Roswell, there was a piece of metal recovered from a UFO encounter in Denmark. The uh -huh. file number is 202085. If you type just that number and you'll come up with the file. I have it on our websites and Penrest and other place else too. When it shows an object recovered from a UFO encounter, and that's their words, not mine. That's what's on right. the cover sheet of the file. Right, right. It says, covered from a UFO encounter, blah, 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 Denmark. And when you sit there and lay the points of Bob's object and overlay it on top of that object, the points are exactly the same. Okay. Right what do you, what do you mean by the points are the same? Before the object was cut, the object tapered from a rounded bottom to a point. Right. Okay. I'm and, trying to visualize this. Go ahead, continue. You know, uh, I'll, I think you've seen it original, or the original picture, haven't you, Angel? Yes, yes, you sent it to me, yes. Okay. Uh, if you overlay that file and place Bob's point next to, the, on top of that other one, they're exactly the same. Right? There's a little, little hook or little hooky type deal. On, on Rich was on the end of Bob's object. They match. They match perfectly. You know, so that government's got one. We had a DOD scientist named Gilbert Jordan come in to the museum when we were still open as far as a physical entity goes. He said he worked at Dugway and he had seen that object, and he signed a uh, a release that he he had seen something that looked just like Bob's. He was on TV too at the same time when he was on uh, with News Channel here. Mm -hmm. On Channel 3. And, uh, you know, I can't tell you who made this thing. I can't tell you how it was made. I can tell you what's in it. I can tell you that it will send out an EMF signal that you can identify with an EMF meter. See, that's what, that's the, the thing that gets me right there. It's sending out signals. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we've been able to, you, you, you've been, been able to detect the, uh, the, the EMF signals that you're sending out. Uh, any chance of decoding any of the signals? Uh, does anybody know how to do any of that? No, there's, like I said, I'm having, I have so much trouble just getting, or you have so much trouble just getting the basic testing we've gotten done. You know, uh, can't get any, every, either people are scared of it or people are told to stay away from this. It's the only thing I can figure out. There was a catastrophic event formed this object. There was an explosion. If you pull, if you smell this object, and, that, and I know that sounds stupid, but if you put that object up to your nose and inhale, remember your old cap guns? Yeah. Right, 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 fire yeah. cap gun? You remember yep. that sulfur smell you get from the exploding, uh, exploding gunpowder? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same yes, smell yes, you yep, get right. off the of Bob's object. Still, yet today. Really? Really. So there was a and his statement, his polygraph test, his eyewitness testimony states there was a flash or an explosion. Now, if this was ejected off this other off these two neon lights, then it was force. I mean, there was, it was there was either emergency ejection of some sort or something happened that formed this. How big was it when it was ejected? We have, we have no idea because it was. Uh, elongated. It's got layering on the outside of it. Now, if you know anything about aluminum alloys at all, you will never see aluminum layer. It can't do it in an oxygen environment. Now, I'm not a metallurgist or anything like that. Yeah, well, uh, you don't have to be a metallurgist. If you've but ever here's, no, here's the thing, though. I mean, what are the chances that this thing came to be because of the explosion and just, you know, chemicals mixing in, you know, in the explosion itself? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's as good a scenario as anything else. Or it could be a location device to say not a signal. Like, that would be the craziest uh, coincidence that some metals just slammed against when each other. When you got 30 feet, you know, you're out in outer space. Well, even though it's aluminum, is it magnetic? No. That's it's not magnetic. Crazy. It's, got, yeah. it's, it's not magnetic, but it, it's it not magnetic, but it gives off a signal. 
Right. Now, is it a pulsing or is it a straight constant? I mean, it, it's not constant. It, it varies up and down, up and down. And it also depends on the humidity in the air. Oh, that's interesting. You know, and it'll hold heat. It'll stay warm if you heat it. It'll stay cool if you cool it. It's usually two or three or four degrees cooler than the ambient air temperature around it. Huh. Uh, I mean, there's just this this kind of thing. I've never seen a Briggs and Stratton do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Briggs and uh, Stratton, hey. when we ask you, don't do that. Now, let me ask you, do, do people get, like, weird feelings when they're around it for the first time? Cause, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. If it's giving out signals, it might be giving out some kind of a signal that might interfere with, I don't know, the human. I've had per, people hold this thing, and you'll see goosebumps jump over in their arms. Right. Just, just right there, just, it's almost like somebody flipped a switch. Some people can't hold it or can't stand to be around it before they even know what it is. And especially Eureka Springs. I had it on display down there again this year. And uh, many, many people was coming up to it, you know, and saying they were, they were receiving or feeling the pulse or whatever. Like I say, it doesn't bother me or it hasn't bothered me as far as I know. Nothing's dropped off yet. Well, you've right. gotten attuned to it probably or something. I don't know. Yeah, you know, actually, I don't know. I, I don't and, know. And, and you know, it, are you glowing in the dark at all? Uh, I don't know. I've turned the lights <laughs> off lately. I, I might be. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, uh, Larry. Uh, you didn't find the object. The object found you. Yeah, but it found Bob. <laughs> and well, and then Bob. and you found Bob. Well, the and object told Bob to find you. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a curse or, or a gift. I'm not real sure yet. You know, me, uh, me and Bob were good friends, and I knew Bob two years before I ever heard the story. You know, uh, which is kind of a surprise because uh, it's surprising because I mean, if you have a story like this, anybody that you meet, I mean, this is like one of the things I think would be the, one of the first things you talk about, like. Yeah, Bob, you know, Bob wasn't like that. Especially if you have a friend who's into these kind of subjects at all in any way. I mean, you know, that's the, that's a piece of conversation you have over a beer. It's like, hey, man, check out well, this object I got. It might have been for out, a UFO. I found out about this over breakfast one. We ate breakfast together a lot. And I'm sitting there. I'd seen Stan Friedman on uh, the History Channel doing his Roswell bit. Stan Friedman, okay. And okay. Uh, and I'd gone, went to breakfast with him that morning. I'm sitting there, supping my face full of food, and Bob is too. I said, man, go hell of a show I seen last night. This Roswell thing, the aliens and Christ sausage. And, you know, I'm going blah, 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 blah. He don't miss a beat. He's stuffing food in his face. He said, oh, hell, that's nothing. i got a piece of one in my closet. <laughs> and he well, that's a conversation right opener. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. It's like, you know, okay, continue. Right <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, okay, Bob, you got a piece of a UFO in your closet. He says, yeah, that's where I keep it in my closet, my gun case. Yeah, and natural, I want to course, see yeah. that, so I went over to the house and seen this before it had ever been cut or anything. And he went in the back closet, come out with a three fifty seven gun case, unzipped it, pulled that thing out, it was in a plastic bag, and handed it to me. And as soon as I seen it, I knew it was alumina, but I had, could not figure out how it could have that scaling effect on the outside of it. There's just no way you can do that in a molten aluminum ejected. You can't cast it. It's too fine to be cast as far as the detailing on it. And the second thing is about aluminum, when it, when it cools, it's always rounded on the edges. It never sharp. It's never as sharp. Uh, flat splatters, always rounded the edges. Hmm. These chads are off of the object, away, They're raised away from the main part of the object, layered like a pine cone. Like a pine cone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a pine cone. Or I called it like pin feathers on a chicken leg. Turkey leg. We've been talking to Larry here for uh, a good 25, uh, 30 minutes now about this object uh, that he has in his possession, which uh, my co-host here, the other guy, just saw for the first time. What are your impressions of the object for the you know seeing it for the first time there, Alan? I'm thinking honestly, it's possible that it, you know, it, it there were no things that saying it was a meteor or anything. But I'll tell you this. This looks like it was shaped, and it when it was in the air, maybe it was molten, and it solidified as it got closer to the Earth. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's Possible. transform. It's transformium from the movie Transformers. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, this is yeah, wow. Okay, you you your your scenario is just about right. We know it was in a molten condition. It was right. ejected in force from whatever it was 
came from. Originally from, right. Whatever it was, it, it was a molten condition forced under extreme pressure into an extremely cold environment. And the outside... Solidified. Now, the extremely cold environment has to be space, I, I would take well, it. Well, anything, yeah, that's, that's what you have to figure. Right. And the test, even the NIDS test back when they tried to compare this to a 360, says that rapid heating or rapid cooling took place. Uh, uncontrolled rapid cooling is the way they put, the way they said it. But yet they're still trying to make it something that's in their book. The problem is, see, this object don't fit the book. Yeah, and you get a mainstream is... scientist, metallurgist, that is so smart he knows everything. And then you show him something, and he can't find it in the book, and it don't exist. Or it's not real. Well, it, it's problem. like right smack in front of him. Hate to break the news to you. I had a guy come down to Rick Springs two years ago. I, I was one of the presenters down there. And I had I keep dodging when I do this. I always bring the object with me so people can see it because they don't believe half the time. You know what you're saying, and if you don't, if you don't see it holding in your own hand, have people offered to buy it from you? Oh, a couple people, yeah. How, now, what's the best offer on. you've gotten? We had a uh, hey, we had a guy, big real estate mogul out in Nevada, offer a couple hundred thousand dollars for it. Huh? But, that's it, really? Yeah. And you know, it's that's not a low ball offer, really. Yeah, but that's a low ball offer. Was it Donald well, you Trump? Know, how do you, how do you put a price on something that nobody can compare it to? Hey, well, here's the thing. Yeah, well, exactly, I'm wondering with current technology, couple hundred thousand. Can, I mean, can this be duplicated? With current technology, though, can this be duplicated at this point? I doubt it. I sincerely doubt that this could be made yet today. I mean, On... you put it. You, I mean, figure you put you put aluminum in a hyperbaric chamber that takes out all the air, so you now have right. the oxygen. Okay, the, yeah, out, uh, the out, good start. Good start. Okay, okay. So then the question is: Is how do you? You can use magnetics or acoustic levitation to actually make a weightless space. To form this in. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm listening. Now, now the question is: is all the other trace elements that you're telling me? That's the question. Where that's the, the question? Where? What? what plant in the world would have all the elements in this object? I mean, in how? One place? Yeah, but you're telling me all the elements are earth-based elements, though. So who knows? This might this might have been the new magic. This might be the metal that might have had JFK's magic bullet for all I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, this yeah, might be know. the metal that they make the bones uh, for Wolverine. Say, 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 if you try to put it and make it here on the planet, you never know on Earth. Right, right. Then then you're ignoring the story. If you ignore the story, you can make it anything you want to make it. This was formed outside of our atmosphere. It wasn't in it. It wasn't in. A plant or a... Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Now, there's a difference between saying this was formed outside of the atmosphere had to or be. It this was, has it had been to be. house. What what proof because of lack of oxygen bubbles in it? I mean, what is it, it that It's makes got it? oxygen in it. That's one test I'd like to get done because well, oxygen... Well, uh, also you I, determine I, the fact that it, that it cooled rapidly, right, which would right. It, indicate it would cool space. Right, it cooled rapidly. It's the only scenario, so the only scenario that, that, that fits the object is an inert... Uh, either very low oxygen or an inert gas, where it's sealed like argon or something like that. Right. Right. And uh, again, like I say, if you ignore Bob's story, and like I say, you can make anything you want to, but I, I have asked for 19 years. I dare anybody show me one, show me making them. I dare them. They can't do it. I've had people sit there and show pictures of iron, and they say, this looks just like Bob's object except it's iron. Show me one of these that looks like Bob's object, made out of aluminum, and I'll go away. I mean, does this thing look like it was sculpted that way, or does it look like it's just like a result of an explosion, and it just melted that way? To you, and to, to, to the It had to be movement involved, because the okay. ablation layering on the outside of the object. Now, that was either caused by the force of the metal being ejected, in, into this cold environment, vacuum environment, or uh, air air stream coming into our atmosphere, high high altitude, like the space shuttle comes in, or something like that. Now, here's here's a scenario for you, uh, Larry, and this could 
probably be the the answer to what this thing is. Could it possibly be that maybe there is an explosion of some kind of a of a craft in space, and this piece of debris came flying off of the object that exploded? Uh, Hell, UFO, it might be even something it we shot down, you know? Oh, exactly, something we shot at, blew it up, and this is a piece of it, 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 it melted this way as it was speeding away from the original wreckage. Well, if there had been something that shot shot at this, there would have been another light in the sky. Because there, there would have been a, a, a fire. Well, unless it was the, one of our stealthier, stealthier crafts. 1985? <laughs> yeah. Didn't we have lasers back then. Ah, no, 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 we had no. lasers. We had lasers. They were uh, weaponized. That's in 1985. Was weaponized. That was Here's the thing: we, we we can't have our cake and eat it too, Larry. <clears throat> if we if we're going to believe that that the U.S. government has been uh, you know back engineering aircrafts for 70 years now, whatever mm-hmm. yeah, years, right. uh, that pretty much tells me they're a lot more advanced than they let on. Uh, if they're doing that kind of stuff, and you know, right now we're seeing the advancements we're seeing, I'm pretty sure they're just it's a trickle down effect. They're giving us what they want to give us, but in reality, they might be hundreds of years more advanced than what they're you know, what they're that's telling. That's a possibility too. But so, again, like I say, I'm going. By you say yeah, lasers didn't ex- exist back then, but for all we know, lasers might have been around in the 40s. We just you know in the 30s, we just we have no idea. Well, you know, like I said, it, we, the object was recovered in Denmark in 1947 prior to Roswell. Uh, there's not a lot of information on it, but the picture itself says a thousand words, because something from from, from 1947, and of course that's a Xerox copy of it, off right. of microfilm. But you lay those two objects, Bob's object next to that Denmark object file folder, and it's almost, almost I mean, almost exactly the same. I first seen them out in Roswell at the museum. The director showed them to me. John Greenwald and the Clipper Stone got them released at the same time, uh, Freedom of Information Act. And I called John up as soon as I got this thing. I said, Greenwald, I said, is that file real? He says, yeah. I said, okay, John. And he's a good friend of mine. You know, He's done a couple of shows on us over the years on the UFO Hunters and UFO Files. In fact, the last mm-hmm. show we, he did was 2009, just before Bob was, was taken away. So, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I can't tell you. All I know is it it ain't something you're going to find in in any alloy book. It ain't from this neighborhood. How about that? It ain't from this neighborhood. (laughs) It ain't from around tears. Now, are you at at any any point, have you been in fear of your life because of the object? I mean, has it ever become scary with any individuals approaching you? Uh, Has that happened at all since uh, you've had possession of this thing? I haven't, no, but I believe Bob was killed. I believe Bob was run off the road. That's why I ask if any of that has trickled on to you. Um, I haven't had any problems to speak of that uh, I can relate to this object. Uh, have oh, you've of... had other troubles? Well, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say it's to this object. I can't connect it to this. But uh... Listen, if his phone gets cut off suddenly, uh, just realize, folks, uh, we had nothing to do with it. They got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you'll hear a lot of loud bangs for to get me. <laughs> you'll hear, he's, in a, he's in a bunker, Alan. They ain't going to get him. It's, it's oh, it's, you know, <laughs> if, if, if I go, there's going to be a couple go with me. Put it that way. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm packing, so to speak. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. Anybody? I'm looking to sell one of mine if anybody wants one. Not I the guess. one that you, you were arrested with, right? Not no, actually, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I, <laughs> Did you ever get that one back or no? Uh, I got to file paperwork for it in about another three months. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, there, I'd buy got, that one. <laughs> you know, they they got to use it a few times down the border first and they can get it back. <laughs> oh, that's that's so correct. Funny. Put a couple bodies on there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sprinkle a few bodies on this one. Yeah, it you know, it, it, guys, you know, it's like I said, I'll tell everybody, and I'm open, I'm open to mainstream scientific investigation. I don't want UFO. Laboratories. I don't want people really connected with UFO fans. I want mainstream laboratories. That's what I'm dealing with. Who I'm dealing with. Right. Because UFO field, as far as I'm concerned, is full out. Yeah, but as soon as you mentioned this thing came from space, and uh, we believe it's from a, a something in space that is manufactured, uh, you're going to get that same look a UFO guy would get. Well, I saying, don't. Yeah, I was abducted that. by little gray guys. I don't tell them that. Okay. That's so how we got. That's how we got our you... test done on this on, on in MSU. So we how do you approach a sample them? In, and said, hey, can you do an XRD on this? said, sure. The guy looked at it, 
And he says, where'd it come from? I says, it come out of the sky. That's all we said. And the guy that was doing the test, he looked at it, and he said, oh, it's a piece of aircraft, aluminum, probably off a 747 wing. It's exactly what he told us, as David Lamb. Now, is there any chance this could be something like out of the movie Joe Dirt? That do what? Uh, Alan, remember the movie Joe Dirt? Yep. Oh, Joe is Dirt, okay. <laughs> any chance that this is a huge pile of poo? It's if been it called alien, a, 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 alien. It, it was called alien, uh, alien poo in one of the stories. Was done <laughs> on it. All I can say is, if it hasn't melted yet, mm, it, probably, it, it, probably it, not. It, yeah. Alien suppository or whatever, you know. <laughs> well, let me ask you: if it's aluminum, instead of breaking off a piece, has anybody tried melting portions of it and see if it's still magnetic? Yeah, I have a melting. And it cools uh, off. I, I, I just got that test done too. I did not know the melting temperature on it, which is a tad above normal aluminum. Aluminum and it stays molten a little bit longer than normal aluminum, so could there is chipped? an anomaly there too. Now here's the question: so it can be melted, it can still, be chipped. Is it still giving off radio frequencies or EM frequencies on I the pieces that, that have melted month, out? Huh. But it was last month. No, no, I'm saying, a, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is the piece that was melted off, is it still? Would it still give off frequencies? That piece. That's what, that I, piece. No, I've like, never, che- I've never checked that. That's a, that's a fact, great question. Yeah, right if, you, if you can cut off a piece, yeah. Once you can cut you've off changed a piece. the cons- once you've changed the consistency and maybe the the molecular alignment, I'm just wondering if it still has the same properties as it I, did. That, when- you know, I, that I, I've never checked because Chase Classy's got that piece in, in uh, at, at, with her right now because she's got a couple of tests I want her to run. Well, you said you melt. You have a piece of melted, so I was thinking maybe it should. Yeah, it was it. melted here back in uh, in uh, March. Oh, okay. Uh, Rudy Olson did those tests at Sealy. So okay. We we had never ever gotten a melting temperature on on the object because we didn't have we didn't want to melt a big piece of it. Right. You know, and this test I had done at Sealy this time, I broke a chad off the outside of the object, one of the, one of the chads. Right. And I sent that to Chase. Or actually, didn't send her. I gave it to her in Ohio when we was doing some uh, doing some recording for a documentary. And she's a forensic specialist. Okay. And uh, I gave her Rudy's uh, uh, address with Sealy because he had already volunteered to do free testing for us for me. Oh, that's cool. That was nice of him. And uh, I jumped all over that. Uh, we're talking, like I say, number one, of the top five in the world. Labs, and then there, that way I've got a uh, chain of custody of the object, of right. the piece, and it went to her. I went to Rudy. Rudy did it. He did these testing. I got all all the reports back from him. He also tested at the same time, and some metal recovered by a guy by the name of Benny Foggins. Benny recovered a chunk of metal in his driveway from a UFO. Almost the same breakdowns on the element, basic elemental in it. Again, other than he does have tin in his, but he has an off-earth strontium reed in his also. And uh, I have a sample, or we have a sample of the Reynolds uh, debris. Reynolds some forest, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Reynolds some forest, and he's running sample tests on that now. Along with Colonel Hout, I believe. No, oh, that's not right. Colonel, uh, oh, who was the guy at Reynoldsham? Right. Wasn't Hout. Wasn't Hout. I, that's <laughs> Roswell or whatever. Right. Uh, anyway, one of the guys was on the police team. Okay. All right. that, that picked it up. And he, they had samples in there. And Nick Pope, I guess, is involved in that, too. Probably, Probably him, Peter Robbins, yeah. and some of the other guys. I don't know. Robinson don't sound familiar, but it was, anyway, it was one of the one of the one of the guys from the MPs, and they're doing testing on it right now. And I'm damn near bet you that the silicone or the, the aluminum on that element's break down a lot the same as Bob's, and it'll break down the same as as Benny's, and that ties in three separate eyewitness UFO encounters. Was the same basic leftover leavings from those encounters. No, so those a fuel cell. Could this thing be a fuel cell? I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Could be alien poo. Okay, and there you go. That, that's that's a long distance. <laughs> a long distance suppository. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that's a big alien. If that's a suppository, <laughs> yeah, mighty big alien. It's one of them reptilians, I guess, or whatever. 
Uh, man. Yeah, you know. it's, such a, it's such an amazing story. You know, I, I wonder, have you guys uh, done any, like, x-rays to see if there's maybe anything in that is, this thing might be casing something, like maybe it's, like, holding something within it? I, 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 that I haven't had a chance to do. I can't. That's a test. That's a high dollar test. It's an X-ray deal. Because I mean, it's sending out a signal. There's a good chance there might be something in the middle of there, just you know, being encased in this thing. Yeah, you know, what's inside of it? We can't. I can't see what's inside. It's an egg. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Pandora's pod. box. Pandora's it's pod. pod. You know, it's going to break open and take us all. Pandora's pod. You know, uh, laugh, laugh all you want. You never know. You know. You we never all- know. You know, enough of us have seen the Andromeda Strain and all these other movies. Yeah, the the actual well, zombie apocalypse when I started this. That scenario is very plausible. Yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah. This you might know. be what starts a zombie apocalypse there, Larry. Uh, oh, you know. My Jesus. Well, like I, I'm well armed, so I should be able to take care of, take a couple of them out before they get <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah, you'll be, see, if a zombie apocalypse ever were to happen, I know I'll die quick. That's for sure. Larry, you'd survive. <laughs> I mean, I know you'd live for, for a long time. Uh, you'd take out a lot of zombies. Yeah, Alan, over there here. There you go. Yeah, I'm a good shot. Alan, I think, would die quicker than I would, probably. I'm a little bit more prepared than you realize, but I'm not going to talk about it on the radio. Oh, uh, no, don't, don't, don't tell oh, all boy. your secrets. That's true. That's exactly. true. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I told all my ex wives, and they did. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, they ex wives. <laughs> yeah, there you go, exactly. Larry, it's awesome having you on. Uh, hey, next, my pleasure. Next time you, you come on here, better not be a year apart, man. You better be having you on uh, a lot sooner than that. Okay, well, awesome. I appreciate any time. You know, I'm more, more than happy to inject uh, whatever I know about this thing, which I've got more questions out than i got answers. No kidding, i, I got more questions, too. With, I started out with a, with a story and a piece of metal, and now i got the story, the piece of metal, and i got it tied into two other cases, or three other cases. And, and a bazillion it, 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 questions. It, 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 it's like uh, Ted Bill says, it's a case that just keeps on giving. Yeah, no kidding. You know. Is there any website links you want to give out to the audience so they could uh, follow along here and uh, keep, you know, keep up with your research on this thing? Uh, Museum of the Unexplained, Ariel Lomley's research group on Facebook. Uh, UFO Hard Evidence, uh, .conforms.com is our old original site that's got most of the information on it. And if you just type my name in, Larry C. Kander, I'm, I'm, a, I'm published as far as the book goes about this right now. Mm-hmm. You can only go as far as you push the Bob White Legacy at Goldie Press. And that'll give you just about everything other than this latest 2015 finding. But there will be an adium to that book coming up shortly. Excellent. And you better be on the, the show here when that book comes out. All right, well... uh like I said, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, it's Love always a pleasure listening to you, it's, even though it's the first time for me listening to you. Yeah, exactly. It's a bad choice of words. Uh, yeah, ask the right questions. <laughs> you know, and, and that's that's what I want. I want people to ask the questions. And, you know, it gives me ideas, too. You know, well, I, like I, said, I, don't, I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you it, it ain't off a Buick, Buick bumper, 1953 yeah, exactly. Roadmaster. You can tell us what it is or what it isn't. All we know is that this thing is very bizarre. It's got not it. from this world, and the answers uh, that it could hold are, well, could be the answers to everything that we talk about on this show. Yeah, Larry, I forgot to mention that Los Alamos stuff, but I'll catch that next time. Next time we have you on, because we're, we're really short on time. Larry, thank you so much hey, for being on the you. show here. Appreciate your time, sir. Larry Seekander, everybody. Check out his website. Check out the object. Awesome story. Alan, uh, this has been a, another fun episode of Skywatchers Radio, my friend. Absolutely it has. I always enjoy having a nice, wonderful show with you, and... Uh, it's been amazingly amazing. Been amazingly amazing. That's right, folks. Skywatchers Radio, we sing. No, 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 we don't. No, No, trust me, you don't want to hear him sing, folks. You don't want to hear that. No, you don't want to hear that. But you know what you want to hear? Monday night, coming back, Future Theater. That's right. Future Theater will be on live this week, so stick around for that. And next week, guess who we have on? Guess guess who's going to be on the show with us? Uh, Guess, 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 uh, guess. Give me a hint, give me a hint, give me a hint. Uh, his name rhymes with Ot Arlo. Ot Arlo. Yes, yes. Uh, um, can I call Yahtzee? Really? Yahtzee. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you call Yahtzee on this one. All right, fine. Go ahead. Okay, Yahtzee. We're gonna we're gonna get to a little uh, a little bit of cryptozoology next week with the one and the only Scott Marlowe. Oh. Oh, okay. That's going to be a lot of fun. He's been all over the place from the BBC to 
the History Channel and Monster Quest, Discovery Channel. He's been all over the place. Great guest. He's going to be on with us next week. Please stick around for Dark Matter Radio Network's other programming after this show because there's a lot more stuff coming up. Also on PSN Radio, same stuff. Stick around for both. Keep listening. Keep your eyes on the skies and your prize on July when Art Bell returns to the airwaves. We're almost there, people. We're almost there. Until then, and until next time, keep your soul rolling. 